Hey Saints, uh, this video is going to upset a lot of people. It'll be pretty short. Uh, but it is the... Oh man. Peter was not the first Pope. Uh, the founding of the official Catholic Church when it went crazy around in the Dark Ages and all this paganism came in through Constantine and his heretical mother. Um is hundreds of years apart. There's not even evidence Peter went to Rome. By the way, Peter was the apostle to the circumcision, meaning he was sent to the Jews, and Paul was sent to the Gentiles. That's why Paul went to Rome. Okay, there's no evidence that Peter was actually in the city of Rome at all. Um, it was common for them to take uh, items and say they're relics. This is a piece of the real cross or the spear that pierced his side. There's like three in the world right now that claim to be Longinus's spear. Uh, and they would get these relics and people would pay a lot of money to touch them or kiss them or donate to the church. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's I'm not trying to hurt people. I love Catholic people. My godchildren are Catholic. Uh, however, they have a heretical gospel of work salvation. Uh, and they even believe that priests can deny salvation to someone. Or the Pope can deny salvation. The Pope is without error. Have you seen some of the stuff these Popes did? They were horrific. And he claims to be the vicar for the Son of God. The replacement for the Son of God. I did a video saying that the Pope is kind of anti-Christ. He is in replacement of Christ because he claims, and you can see the verses where he takes credit for being a replacement for not only Jesus, the Son of God, but for the Holy Father and for the Holy Spirit. You have to see that. Jesus is the one mediator. There's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And my point here is not to dispute everything of Catholicism. I could do probably a week's worth. I mean, hours and hours of videos on tracing the pagan roots of Catholicism back to Babylon with the mother, the, the virgin baby idols and worship, which you can find in Babylon, Semiramis and Nimrod, uh, Isis and Horus, uh, even, I, I can't, even Lent with the 40 days, which is the uh, 40 years that Tammuz lived and he ate ham because he was killed by a boar. It, it's just, it's all terrible. It's all, all of it can be traced back and they mix Christianity with these pagan things. And they took their, they had these little demigods, like they'd have a god of agriculture, which I think was Saturn. Saturn or Uranus or something. Anyway, it's a god of agriculture, a god of traveling, a god of animals, you know. And so they would pray to these uh, false gods. Well, what happened when Christianity came in is they just put saints' names over top. So you'll have Saint so and so, the patron saint of travel, right? And they pray to these dead people, which we're not supposed to do. Or they pray to Mary as a mediatrix. But she's not a mediator. She's just a human being that was a sinner that needed a savior. That's why she said, my heart rejoices in God, my savior. She was full of grace. God found grace in her. And he blessed her to be the vehicle for, the God, for God to be manifested in the flesh through her. There's several places in the Bible where people try to worship Mary. Blessed is the a uh, woman who bore you, and Jesus knocked that down real quick. We were like, no, no, bless more of those who hear my father's words and keep them, or something like that. So he 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 killed that worship of my mom thing out of here. She's not the mother of God. She's the mother of the man Christ Jesus, who happened to be God in the flesh. But she can't be the mother of God because that means she preexisted and she didn't. God preexisted before her, so she can't be his mother. That's why Jesus was telling. The Pharisees, David calls, uh, calls um, the Christ Lord, yet 
He is his father through the flesh. He's his great, 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 great grandfather in the flesh because the Messiah comes through the lineage of, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lineage of David. So how can he call him Lord? And they're like, eh, because he can't get flesh versus spirit. See, he's Lord because it says the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at my right hand till I make your enemies thy footstool. So this David calling him Lord. But yet, he's his great, 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 great grandfather, right? So they couldn't get it in their head. So there's so many heretical teachings I digressed. And I just, my heart hurts for people bound in this religion. This It's all steeped in, and I know people mean well, but they, they preach blatant work salvation, and there's so many false teachings. Like it says that a doc, one of the doctrines of demons is forbidding to marry, which they do for the priest. God ordains marriage. He says it's good. Paul says he'd rather not be married because he likes to focus on, you know, his uh, spiritual teaching of the gospel. And that would be a diversion for him. It would be a, a distraction. So he'd rather not. But marriage is good. You know, they forbid to marry, forbidding eating certain meats. Uh, the vain repetitious prayers. I saw today they get the rosary beads from Hinduism and Buddhism, which stems from Hinduism. These little teeny beads, and they pray. They do the repetitious prayers to get into a trance state. That's where they got the rosary beads from. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Bible says, don't do vain repetitious prayers like the pagans do. It's okay to do the Lord's Prayer because that's an example for us, but to repeat it over and over and over and over and over again is some penance. It's an honor to pray to God and say God's Word, not a punishment or penance. I just, I'm so hurt for these people. My heart is for them. I want them free and entering into the rest of Christ. Eternal life really is a free gift. You don't get saved because you follow Christ. Or you give your life to Christ. But because he gave his life for you, you put your trust in that. You should follow him once you're saved. But you don't do it or maintain salvation by your works of following him. You see? I'm just, I'm just so sad. This is not to be mean. But Peter, okay? He was never to the Gentiles. He was never in, even... There's no historical proof he's in Rome. Their story, see, they like to try to connect themselves to Peter, but there's no real historical evidence that he was ever even in Rome. There'd be no reason for him to come to Rome. Last we heard he was in Syria and then in Jerusalem, I think, in Scripture. But in any case, it says Peter is sent to the circumcision, while I, Paul, am sent to the uncircumcision. So why do Gentiles, a Gentile church, a non-Jewish founded church, because you know there's one new man in Christ, both Jew and Gentile, neither Jew nor Gentile, because it's just one new man, right? But there were many believing Jews. Our apostles were all Hebrews, right? So um, we're grafted into them. It says in Romans 9, why would a Gentile church dismiss Paul, who's to the Gentiles, and has proof that he's in Rome, want Peter to be their connection. For one, he walked with Jesus in the flesh. That's one reason. Second reason is they can connect him with work salvation. See, they can take stuff from Jesus' earthly ministry when he teaches about discipleship and to Israel under the law and try to mix that up and stay in the work salvation. If they let Paul be their foundation, then it adds attention to Paul's writings which clearly said that salvation is not of works. And if you add works, you cancel grace, and it's another accursed gospel. There's no way of taking Paul and getting away with teaching work salvation. It's for him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. His face counted for righteousness, and Paul stands for it. He puts a double curse on anybody adding works to the free gift of eternal life. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. When you put 100% trust in what Christ did, his shed blood. And I ask people, what are you going to offer God if he asks you why you should be in heaven? I would offer nothing but the shed blood of Jesus. Only the shed blood of Jesus to wash away my sin. And it said if I put my trust in him, I get God's righteousness. And that's why I'm born again and I should enter heaven. Not because I'm good, but because 
That's what you promised. And so I only offer Jesus' blood for my sins because says Jesus by himself purged our sins and set out the right hand of majesty on that. Purgatory is not biblical. That's a verse taken out of context in 1 Corinthians 3 about our works being tried by the fire for reward or loss of reward. It's not you being tried by the fire to be cleansed. Either you accepted the free gift of eternal life and your sins were purged or cleansed by the blood of Jesus or they weren't. Okay? So, uh, there's so much unbiblical, it's hard for me to stay on track. But again, Peter, why would they choose him? Well, they think he's the rock Jesus is talking about, but he's not. Peter means a little stone. Jesus is the rock. He is the stone the builders rejected. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the rock of our salvation. He is the rock Moses struck and the water came out of. That's the living water. Um... He's the rock, the foundation, the rock that he's building the church on is not Peter. The rock is the foundation of truth that was given to Peter by the Father. Let's look at this over here in Matthew. Uh, so what's happening is Jesus, and it's interesting because Jesus is asking the disciples, sitting right outside Mount Hermon when he asked them. Mount Hermon is where the fallen angels fell and they made an oath, where Hermon means an oath to sin by being with human women and creating these giants in Genesis 6 when it says the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men you know and they married them and they had children with them and they were giants and they became men of old men of renown and these same ones Jude talks about these angels who left their first estate their own habitation talking about their eternal bodies they came in the form of flesh and sinned in the flesh uh, and created these uh, entities. So that's one of the reasons for the flood. I had to get rid of these horrible things. Uh, there's all kinds of stories about them. So uh, it's interesting that he's saying, who do they say I am? Right at Mount Hermon. It's kind of like some portal or something. I don't know if there's a portal there where the angels come or whatever. But he's basically proclaiming who he is right there. Where the uh, angels send. So it was... Uh, it was interesting there. Uh, and he asked Peter, um, he goes, you know, who's, who, who do people say that I am? And they said, this prophet or that prophet. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, that's Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and that means little rock, or like chip off the rock, stone. Okay, not the rock foundation. He's a chip, he's a stone off of the foundation of truth, okay? And he says, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. The rock is the revelation that was given to him. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And it's interesting, he said the gates of hell, when he's standing next to a portal where the fallen angels fell. Because the, the, the angels fell there, they met there, they had their oath. And I believe that if they were on Mount Hermon and they came down at Mount Hermon, there must be some kind of gate or portal. It says the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It's interesting. I'm sure I'll get people that don't believe in the Nephilim doctrine. Uh, but I do. I think it's clear uh, Josephus, the historian, said that they had 21-foot skeletons on display at that time still uh, uh, outside of Jerusalem. Uh, and they became the Hercules and the Greek gods, the ones that men worshipped as demigods. Uh, so it says right here, you know, that it sounds like Peter's the rock. Peter, it means stone. The rock is the foundation that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. And upon that, he's going to build the church. Okay. Peter is not the foundation of the church. Do you really think Jesus is not the foundation of his own church? You think Peter's the foundation of his church? No, Jesus is the foundation. So it, it's just crazy uh, that they would do that. Now, the official Catholic church didn't even exist till hundreds of years after Peter's death. Like, what they try to do is they try to say Catholic Church was established in 33 AD at Pentecost. No, no. There's all these 
different churches, like the seven churches back then, Laodicea and Smyrna and stuff. Uh, and there was a Church of Rome there, and it was they were all together. But what happened is the official church, the the government sanctioned Church of Rome, did not exist till hundreds of years after Peter's death. He was not the first pope ever. There's no popery. And not popery like you burn to make your house smell good. No popery is in like no pope in scripture. It's just not biblical. Neither is the infallible human being doctrine of the pope. Nobody is without sin or infallible except Jesus. You know where that infallible pope came from? In the Rome, the Romans, the Caesars could not make a mistake. Just like in the story of Esther, the king, once he said something, he couldn't take it back because that means he was fallible. So he'd have to go through with it. So uh, a king, they, they believed in the infallibility of kings. And the pope just took over being the king of Rome. So he took over where they were emperors. And then you had the pope. The only difference is they brought in an official religion with it. So you got a one world government and one world religion and one world leader right there. That's another attempt and an antichrist system. So, uh, no, Peter died hundreds of years before the official government sanctioned Roman Catholic Church even existed. They can try and connect it to that early church, because that's what they're trying to do. But again, why not take Paul? Because Peter was sent to the Hebrew people, the circumcision. Tells you that in scripture clearly several times. It doesn't mean he didn't preach to any, you know, he preached to Cornelius. He was a Gentile. And it doesn't mean that Paul didn't preach to some Jews. He did. Uh, but he was sent, Paul was the one sent to the, the uncircumcision. Peter was sent to the circumcision. So why would they take one sent to the Jews and try to connect him with the church? Well, it's a lot easier to have a work salvation that way. It's also easier to uh, than Paul because if you point to Paul, then people will read Paul's writings as authoritative, and they'll go, wait, wait, none. you can't add these sacraments and works of righteousness and religious works. These are dead works, according to Hebrews. Let us not lay again the foundation of repentance from dead works and a faith towards God. <laughs> That's what you repent of, trusting in your dead religion and in yourself, and trust in Jesus. So, no, they can't have Paul, who really is uh, sent to the Gentiles and really did start the Roman church. So they, they're going to connect it to Peter. Yeah, It's just horrific. I mean, the Catholic Church was a political monster that ruled over so many, and England got sick of it and finally got rid of being under his thing, but their church is just as heretical. Martin Luther, he walked away with some heretical teachings like baby baptism and stuff like that, but at least he got faith alone. The Catholic Church tried to keep Bibles out of people's hands. They executed one family for teaching their children how to say the Lord's Prayer at night in their mother tongue. They were put to death. They wanted the Bible out of the average man's hands. Why? Because when they read it, they'd see that work salvation is a lie. And all these doctrines they're teaching, these traditions, are not biblical. They wanted people in bondage to the church. That's why they threatened you. you you're not going to be buried in hallowed ground. That means you're not going to heaven. We won't pray for you while you're in purgatory, or you're going straight to hell if a priest doesn't give you your last rites. I don't know what they did in war. Follow people around with last rites, I guess. You know, do 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 hope you don't get shot. It's just craziness. Men holding salvation in their hands when it belongs to Jesus, and he freely gives it to us by his grace through the vehicle of faith. It's just horrible, and, and I'm so passionate about this because I just want people free. I have an ex-Catholic priest that watches the channel. Um, he's saved. I have a 70-something year old Catholic. He's gotten saved. Uh, I tell everybody, check the scripture behind me. You know, you want to accuse me of taking things out of context? No, I don't. Read them. Read it yourself. Read the context around it. I try to show you the context all the time. So Peter was never, no proof he's in Rome. I'm not saying he wasn't there, but probably not. There's no reason for him to be there. Paul is the one that was sent to Rome for the Gentiles. Two, he's not the rock of the foundation of the church. Jesus is the foundation of his own church. Not Peter. He's the stone. He's the little rock chipped off. He's the one the rock of the revelation was given to. 
Okay, the foundation of the revelation. Do you, do you think the church of Jesus Christ's foundation is Peter, a human? No, it's Jesus himself. It says in 1 Corinthians 3, no other foundation can be laid than that which is laid, Jesus Christ. Okay, so it answers it right there. Plus, you see him as the stone the builders rejected, the chief cornerstone, <coughs> all of that. The rock of our salvation. So, he wasn't there. Can't prove that. Secondly, the official government-sanctioned Roman Catholic Church wasn't existing until a few hundred years after Peter's death. There's no popery in the Bible at all. No mention of a pope. Uh, the popes are just uh, like the same Caesars kings of Rome, but they just had a religious standing as well. Uh, so much paganism and, and Babylonian religion, false doctrines in. They tried to kill people for having the Bible, and they did not want it in people's own tongue. They wanted to keep it in Latin and in Koine Greek and stuff that people couldn't understand because they wanted to keep those people in bondage for money and for power. They even sold indulgences. They sold salvation for money. That's what Martin Luther came against. How evil is this? Your money perish with you. I'll say what Peter said to Simon. So he wasn't there. There's no popery in the Bible. There's no proof he even went to Rome. Uh, Paul, if anyone, should have been the apostle to them because they were a Gentile uh, foundation. Uh, not Peter, and, and and you can't connect him. You have to make up all kinds of stuff. So uh, Constantine and his mother, now we know that Mount Sinai is actually in Saudi Arabia. It's in Midian, nowhere near Israel. And then uh, Constantine's mom goes, this is Mount Sinai, some, some mountain in Israel that has nothing to, if you read the Bible, you'd be like, that's not anywhere near where the Bible says it is. It says in Midian. So she would make up stuff like that uh, as a prophetess, and and they'd have all kinds of relics that people would pay and do pilgrimages to see. Nobody had the Word of God in their hand. They weren't allowed to have it or they'd be put to death. Uh, the, if you want to look at the history of the popes and how wicked and corrupt they were, uh, they claim they're infallible. They teach all kinds of doctrines of devils that the Bible clearly calls doctrines of devils. Now, I believe there's really good people in the Catholic Church. I believe there's sincere people in the Catholic Church. I believe there's people that love God in the Catholic Church. I believe they are deceived and they have been following the traditions of men rather than God, clearly. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her fornication. You know, it's so sad. I just want people free. I'm not trying to be mean. I want them free and I want them to have the knowledge uh, that will set them free. Constantine, anyway, him and his mom were both pagans that basically supposedly had a vision of a cross that said, in this sign, conquer. So he, And he won the battle, so he became a Christian, but not really. Okay. It says, the Roman Catholic ch Church claims to have started in Matthew 16, 18, when Christ supposedly appointed Peter as the first pope. Actually, it doesn't say anything like that. However, the honest and objective student of the scriptures and history soon discovers that the foundation of the Roman church is none other than the pagan mystery religion of ancient Babylon. While it, and during the early persecutions of the Roman government, this is 65 to 300 AD, all right, most of professing Christianity went through a gradual departure from New Testament doctrine concerning church government worship and practice. Local churches cease to be autonomous by giving way to the control of bishops. See, there used to be individual churches, but all one body. But no one group was governing all these churches. They were independent, just like my independent fundamental Baptist. We don't have a bunch of churches or a headquarters over us. We're independent. We are Bible-believing, sticking to the Bible only church with no hierarchy, no people over us. We have a fellow church that helped plant us, and that's it. So they gave their control over to bishops, and it became a big monster. See, you give a, a one man all the power, and he's corrupt. He's corrupt by giving the control of the bishops ruling over hierarchies. The simple form of worship from the heart was replaced with rituals and splendor of paganism. I told you those, those beads, I've done so much study on this. 
so much study. Those beads came from Eastern mysticism with re repetitious prayers to go into a trance state. And that's what they do to this day. That's where they got it from. Uh, ministers became priests. See, simple forms of worship. Jesus said uh, they won't worship in, neither in this place or in Jerusalem. But those that worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth. So instead of praying to God from the heart, standing on God's clear word and the free gift of eternal life by God's grace through faith, that simplicity in Christ was replaced with rituals and the splendor of paganism. Ministers became priests and pagans became Christians by simply being sprinkled with water. By the way, water baptism is immersion. Because it represents being buried, you know, dying, being buried, and rising again with Christ. But that's done after you believe, after you're saved. Not as part of salvation. You were baptized into Christ by the Holy Spirit. He said, I can't, John said, I come baptize you with water, but there's one that comes after me, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so when you're saved, it says, in whom we trusted, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit baptizes us into Christ, okay? Because we're born again. Of the spirit not of the flesh they're trying to do something to the flesh born of water and of the spirit is talking about the first and second birth that which is flesh is flesh that which is spirit is spirit first birth of water that was an idiom for being born of woman uh, and then born of the spirit is your spiritual birth so he's separating the first and second births that's all that is it doesn't mean that you're born of water because you got dunked in water um, and so it says uh, this I haven't read yet. The tolerance of an unregenerate membership only made things worse. Sprinkled paganism about is about the best definition for Roman Catholicism. I don't care how sincere somebody is. They can be sincerely wrong. Sincerely wrong. That church is wicked. And I believe it's paving the way for a one world government, religion. And, I mean, just look at it. Just look at it. The Roman Emperor Constantine, Constantine established himself as the head of the church around 313 AD. So that's the closest you can get to an official Roman government sanctioned church, about 300. Well, that's a couple hundred years after Peter's death. Okay, he's not the first pope when it's a couple hundred years between him and this so-called church he founded. It made this new Christianity, new Christianity, quote, it's, he calls it sprinkle paganism. Good, good word. An official religion of the Roman Empire. The first actual pope in Rome was probably Leo, around 440 to 461 AD. So there's another hundred years away from Peter being the pope. The first pope was probably Leo, around 460 AD. Although some claim that Gregory the first was the first pope, and that's not till almost 600 AD. That's 500 years or more. This ungodly system eventually ushered in the darkest period of history known to man, properly known as the Dark Ages, 500 to 1500 A.D. Through popes, bishops, priests, Satan ruled Europe, and biblical Christianity became illegal. In the Bible, there are no popes or priests. We have one high priest, Jesus Christ. It says that. We have a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, Melchizedek, righteous king. Oh, there's no priesthood. We're not in the Levitical system. We have one high priest, Jesus Christ, after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus Christ is our high priest, Hebrews 3, 1, 4, 14 to 15, 5, 5, 8, 1, and 9, 11. All those verses call on that in Hebrews. And all true Christians make up a spiritual priesthood, 1 Peter 2, 5. And we're all saints. You don't get declared a saint because some guy called you one. Jesus Christ has sanctified or made holy all Christians who believe on him, Hebrews 10, 10. So all priests today are unnecessary and un scriptural. Furthermore, the practice of calling priest, priest father is forbidden by Jesus Christ in Matthew 23. There is one mediator between God and man. 1 Timothy 2, 2 5. It says 1 2 5. It says don't call any man father. And it means in a spiritual sense. You're like your great father. You have one holy father. 
and that's our Father in heaven. There are none of these ruling over the church. The Catholic Church teaches Peter was the first pope and the earthly head of the church, but the Bible never says anything close to that. In fact, it was Peter himself who spoke against being lords over God's heritage in 1 Peter 5.3. So he spoke against being a lord over God's heritage. He spoke against popery. Okay? He's not the first pope. Popes do not marry, although Peter did. Peter was married. Matthew 8, 14 to 1 Corinthians 9, 5. And Mary had children after Jesus. She was not a perpetual virgin. She did not ascend into heaven. She is not a mediator. Jesus had several brothers and sisters. And they're mentioned. Matter of fact, James and Jude are both half brothers. It says that Mary knew her husband after Jesus was born. Clearly. It's crazy where they come up with these things. The Bible never speaks of Peter being in Rome. And it was Paul, not Peter, who wrote the epistle to the Romans. In the New Testament, Paul wrote 100 chapters with 2,325 verses, while Peter only wrote 8 chapters with 166 verses, and it wasn't to Rome. In Peter's first epistle, he says that he's simply an apostle of Jesus Christ, not a pope. The Roman papacy and priesthood is just a huge fraud to keep members in bondage, to a corrupt pagan church. And I'm just going to say this off the top of my head. You don't need to do a mass. The mass keeps re-crucifying Jesus over and over again. He said he died once for all. That's it. And Jesus by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of man. See on that. By the way, he rose again. He's not still on the cross. You have to keep crucifying or applying the blood. He offered the blood once in the mercy seat of heaven. And he washed all of our sins away for anyone that will simply trust in him. So please, please check it out yourself. Peter's not the first pope. It's hundreds of years between him. He never even, there's no biblical proof or historical proof he was in Rome. There's Catholics trying to backtrack and write that he was there, but there's no evidence of that ever. There'd be no reason for him to go to Rome because he was not sent to the Gentiles. He was sent to the circumcision. But if they put Paul down, the correct one for the Gentiles in Rome, because he wrote to the Romans, they they couldn't keep up with their heresy, because they that's why they wanted the Bible kept out of people's hands and would put you to death for having it. Because it's clear, eternal life's a free gift. It is by grace you were saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If it's about our faithfulness and following Christ and all this, this is all discipleship. You're saved because Jesus gave his life for you, not because you gave yours to him. You could boast. You could say, I'm saved because I, I was efficient. I followed Jesus. I did this. I did. You didn't do anything. Your Savior did it, and it's why he alone is Savior. He purged your sins. And he became sin for us who knew no sin, so we might become the righteousness of God in him if we only believe. He fixed what Adam lost. Through one man, Adam, all die. And through one man, God in the flesh, Christ Jesus, all have life. It's that simple. Gosh, I, I hope, hope you get it. I know I talked about more than just Peter, but I just wanted to show you that he, there's nothing that puts Peter with the Roman church. It's And they didn't choose Paul, obviously, because he's so against work salvation. Okay, guys, I hate to do this because I know it's going to hurt some people's feelings, but I just want people free. I, I don't care. I, I have to offend people. It says the offense of the cross would cease if I had just one work. And I, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believes. God bless.